Father, we thank you very much for the grace and the privilege you've given unto us this morning to be in your presence. Lord Almighty, you are the word. And I pray, Lord, that you will reveal your mind unto us, even through your word this morning, in the name of Jesus. Through the same word, you will save, you will heal, you will deliver, you will set free, you will meet needs. And through the same word here this morning, Jesus shall be glorified. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want to commend um, those who are in the media putting together the announcement. I told my wife that the last line of the announcement, we didn't have any discussion. They didn't have an idea what I was going to talk about. I, didn't, I wasn't there when they were recording. The last line of the announcement is actually my message this morning, talking about the triumph of hope. Please turn your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 5 from verse 1. Romans chapter 5 from verse 1. The Bible says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. And hope Make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The triumph of hope. The triumph of hope. The Bible makes it clear here from the third verse. It says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation. How can we be glory in tribulation? It is because there is an end to it. Ordinarily, we shouldn't glory in tribulation, but it says we're glory in tribulations also. Why? Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Tribulation will result in patience, and patience will bring experience. And experience will ultimately dovetail and lead to hope. And the Bible says that hope does not make a shame. Why? Does hope not make a shame? Because the love of Christ has been shed abroad in our hearts. Now, hope is translated from the Greek word. The word translated hope here is from the Greek word, uh, elpis. And it means eager, confident, and eager expectation of good. Confidently expecting good. Eagerly expecting good. That's the root word. That's the meaning of the word translated hope. Eagerly expecting good. Confidently expecting good. Now hope looks forward with eagerness to something good that is still ahead. If it is hope, it means that it is still ahead. So hope looks forward confidently and eagerly to something good that is still ahead. Now the whole purpose of the written word of God, which is our Bible that we carry about, that we study, that we read every single time, if we do that, is so that we might learn from it, and not only learn, and also to have hope. The whole essence of the scriptures that we have, is so that we can learn from the scripture and also have hope from the things that we read and learned from the scriptures. In Romans chapter 5, 15, verse 4, the Bible says, And whatever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of script of the scriptures might have hope. The things that were written aforetime, the things that were written before. They were written for our sakes, for our learning, that we through patience and the comfort that we draw from the things that we are read, we might have, we might have hope. So we see basically clearly here that the whole essence of scripture is so that we should learn from scriptures and in learning we receive, we receive hope from the scripture. Now, hope has to be built on substance. I'm, I studied the science-based course and we did some experiments here and there and all that. Sometimes we, we, we need to culture a particular bacteria and um, you cannot culture a bacteria without providing a substrate because the bacteria will not grow on thin hair. So you know, you know there's something here and you want to isolate it, you want to know what it is and all that. So you, they, they, they produce, uh, what they call that thing again, Professor Ladevit. Agar or something? Yeah. Agar. Ah. I'm still good. You know, you know, and then you inoculate it 
And then you put it in an autoclave for a particular period of days. And after, at a particular temperature, and afterwards you go back and check it, the bacteria, whatever you are culturing expectedly, will have grown on the substrate. It wouldn't grow if there was no substrate on which it will grow. So hope also cannot be on thin air. Hope cannot be based on nothing. Hope cannot be based, cannot just hang in the air. Hope has to have a substrate. And the Bible makes it clear it has to be built on a substance. Otherwise, it becomes a minefield of wild imaginations. I'm sure most of us, we've been there before when we're much younger. You know, you'll be working, you are broke. Maybe you have spent your daily allowance that they normally give you. You know, maybe you are taking six pence or toro three pence or one shilling. People hardly took one shilling to school. They hardly did. One shilling was a lot of money. And then you have spent your toro, your three pence, and then you are walking back home or you are walking to school, and inside your mind you'll be saying, ah, I wish I can just find CC. Has it not happened to you? I wish I can just find money on the road. That wild imagination. Based on nothing. It's just, you're just, you're just drifting. Like a, a, a ship on the sea. Tossed to and fro. So if hope is not based on a substrate, the substrate is the word of God. When hope is not anchored on the world, it becomes just wild imaginations. Just wild imaginations. Listen, there can be all, there are all manners of hope. There can be false hope. False hope. You know, you, you see yourself in different forms in your children. A child that looks least like me of the three has, in my own opinion, I may be wrong, but that's what I believe, has many more of my tendencies and the way I do some things than the others. The, the other two, they look more like me, you know, facially, physically, you know, but there are some intricate things that this other one who doesn't look like me facially does. And I say to myself, that's me. One day, many years ago, she was still in secondary school. They came back, you know, they will come, they will go pick them in school and then they will come and have um, extra lesson somewhere at the church offices there and all that. And then she saw this other younger girl who was then in primary school. I don't want to mention her name because she doesn't like the issue. She, she feels very bad every time I remind her. And she's known my car. Both of them, they knew my car. That it was a particular color. And this day, when they came back from school, the car had been resprayed, the color had changed. And so she was shocked, the younger one was shocked. And she was saying, Ah, uh -uh, Timlala, what happened to your daddy's car? Ah, uh, that one said, You don't know anything. That if you close your eyes and face the car and say to the car, tell you a true life story, and face the car and tell the car, Many times, ch change to whichever color you like. She said red. He said, change to red, change to red, change to red. And by the time you open your eyes, the car will turn to red. And she believed her. And she stood in front of the car and closed her eyes. And she kept saying, change to red, 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 change to red. She will open her eyes and see the color hasn't changed. She continued, change to red, change to red, change to red. Nothing happened. So one of the times she opened her eyes and saw the other one laughing and rolling on the floor. That was when she realized that, ah, Oti Mumini gone. That is false hope. Something that is never going to happen. Unfortunately, some people hang on to false hope. When they get to heaven, there will be 72 virgins waiting for them. Virgin at it turn. False hope. And they hang on to it tenaciously. Sometimes we have exaggerated hope. And that is what brings disappointment most of the time. Here in the southwestern part of Nigeria, 
You know, we love celebrations. You can't beat a Yoruba, a Yoruba man in terms of celebration. Even our dressing itself is faji. You, you do like this. You don't need to know how to dance. Just shake and do like this and do like You are dancing already. And many people, when they want to have an event, they have exaggerated hope. Ah, as big as our church is, they must give, by the time our uh, uh, sweet Sam is, ah, uh, uh, they will give me this amount, they will give me that amount, they will give me this, they will give me this. You will do the event, <laughs> you will not get one, 10% of what you expected, and what will happen? Your hope will be dashed. Why? Because from the get-go, your hope was exaggerated. Now, all you needed to ask yourself was that when this person was celebrating, how much did I give him? How much did I give this person when he was naming his own child? How much did I give him when his own child was going to do this? And you are now the one. It is not your turn. You are not expecting that. Ah, uh -uh. That's exaggerated, exaggerated. And, the, you know, some people will have said, you know, I, I, I saw live animals. I saw cattle. Firstly, at Bodija, and then we moved to Akinele. And then people will come. They will ask for bulls to be sold to them on credit. That they will pay the balance after the event. And many times, I can tell you, seven times out of ten, there is always trouble. So you know what those guys will do? The cow they will sell to you for 20,000, way back then, you can't find a cow of 20,000 anymore. The cow they will sell to you for 20,000 naira, the actual cost is 10,000 naira. So they will make you sure that you know, you don't have all the money, and then at least you have 8,000 naira. So they will collect 8,000 naira from you, sell the cow to you at 20,000 naira, and you are promising that you will pay them after the event. They have calculated that know-how, know-how, you'll be able to get 2K. So the moment you pay the 2,000 naira or 3,000, they have broken even, they are not in problem anymore, and all that, but they will still stress you to collect the rest. Exaggerated hope expecting what there is no basis for. There is also vain hope. Vain hope. Vain hope. And it's your togelete. Tommy fin. I don't know how to translate that one into Yoruba, into English. And it's your togelete. Tommy fin. Vain, totally, completely vain hope. No basis, no anchor, no substance, no nothing. You are just, you are, the hope is just on thin, on thin hair. For us as Christians, our hope is based on the truth of God's word. That is what our hope is based on, the truth of God's word. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, no matter how loud it is shouting, if it is contrary to the word of God, let God be true and every man a liar. I've been trying to sort out a marital issue across ocean, and uh, we've been on it for a long time, for some time, not, not a long time, for some time. And then I will keep my wife in the loop and ask her, so advise me, what do I do now, and all that. Now, it got to a stage, you know, the person that reported the matter to me said, all I, all I want is just for my sister to be at peace. I said, is her life threatened? She said, no. Is there threat to this? Is there um, 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 adultery, consistent, perpetual, unrepentant? She said, no. So I said, no, don't worry. He got to the stage that they asked me to speak to the parents. And I'm telling you the truth. I'm t the normal me, that's what I will have done. Talk to the parents and, oh, of course, they should see reason and all that. But I saw the face of God and I believe I wasn't going to talk to the parents. So I said I wasn't going to talk to the parents. I now got to know that the parents also had made up their mind that enough is enough. Uh -uh. Enough is enough, oh, kilo day. This and that and that and that. But I didn't talk to them. We kept at it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, you know, when, you know, when a man has fine, uh, men, 
God will help us. When a man has finally found out that, look, this thing is out of my mind, out of my hand, and he still wants the good thing, you know, the man will become very vulnerable and all that. The guy became vulnerable to me. You know, I encouraged him, sent some chats to me, sent chat. The reason why I, I encouraged the chat is because of the fact I wanted the wife to see those chats. Because if I was reporting it, she might think, oh, Pastor, you are just trying to make things look good and all that. So I, I, I said I was busy. I was really busy. Chat me up. Send chat. When I finish, I'll, so she, uh, the guy chatted me and I accumulated the chat and forwarded them to the wife. And I said, she mustn't share them with anybody. And so she saw really that the husband had gotten, she said, in fact, I had made up my mind that we are going to fight this fight to finish. The man who said he was going to fight this fight to finish was one that was saying, pass the check by me, pass the to this, pass the to that, and all that. So we've been pulling it back and forth, back and forth, no, no headway, nothing was going to happen, and all that. And then, the guy asked me again what was happening and all that. So I just uh, started chatting the wife, and then I placed a call. I said to my wife that, you know, it was a video call. I didn't ask for permission. You know, normally, you know, normally when you want to call somebody on video, you should ask the person for permission because you don't know where he is. You don't know what he's doing. You just put video. It's rude. So don't do it. If you want to place a video call, if you want to place a video call to somebody, ask for the person's permission. Is it okay to call you on video? Now this, you know, I have all manners of aburos and uh, I have talks. I have those who are normal. I have those who are not normal. I have all those. And then also me too. I have different dimensions, different shades. If you want the normal doctor, I give you the normal doctor. If you want the talk doctor, I give you the talk doctor. If you want the obonoko tutu, you know, anyone I can. So I just placed a video call, straight up. I didn't ask for her permission and all that. And I told my wife that the moment she picks it up, just be doing like this. Joma binu and you, Joe. Cha Joe. We were together. So I placed a video call, and I, instead of picking it, I picked it and put it on the face of my wife. And she started doing like this. And you, Joe, Joe, You know, people, tabatori ishu jekbo. There are some people who are pitying my wife in this church. I, I don't know what led this gentle woman to go and marry this man. And there are some people that it is because of her that they are, they are, they are enduring me. But, ah, that guy is a writer, but his wife, uh, she's a good woman. I don't know if the reverse is the case. I don't know. But I know that in that case. So she's, uh, she's doing this and doing that and all that. And then I turned the phone to myself and I started talking. I said, ah, I'm at a party. There is too much noise. I said, go out. Cut the phone. Call back again. And I started talking. The moment she started crying, I said, oh, what it is? The way she burst down, started crying, she now reminded me that what I was asking for, I had asked for the same thing in 2018. I said, give me a daughter chance. And let him mess it up. That once he messes this daughter chance up, I will remove my hand, I will remove my leg, I will remove my head. He said, Do you know, that's the same way you asked me a daughter chance in 2018? I had even forgotten I asked for a daughter chance in 2018. At the end of the day, she broke down, she wept, she accepted the proposal, and I'll talk sense into the man. And the man said, Pastor Dutton, I'll be very close to you now. I'll be very close to you. Because you need close, mommy. What led me to that? I saw that what is happening is not a ground for divorce based on the word of God. And I hung on to that. If life was in, in if our life was in danger or the life of the man was in danger, I won't put my neck. If there was a case of persistent, unrepentant adultery, I won't put my mouth. But because of some other reason, I said, no, God will not allow this one to crash. And to the glory of God, God saved you. Why? Because it was anchored, their action was anchored on the word of God. Listen to me, child of God. If you will anchor whatever you are doing on the word of God, it may not look like it now. Let God be true. 
and every man a liar. God's word will prevail. Hallelujah. Now hope sustains us in the darkest hours of life when it appears that life has nothing more to offer. This is the reason why suicide rate is least amongst believers. Let me not even say believers, amongst churchgoers. Because of the fact that we have hope based on the word of God. Things may be dark, things may be gloomy, it may not be easy, we may not have an idea of where to put the next step, the, the next step and the next, but some way, somehow, because of the word of God on the inside of us, we still have hope of a better tomorrow. Can I hear an amen? Between faith and reality, there is a bridge of hope. We preach faith. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. But between faith and reality, there is that bridge that connects the two. And that bridge is the bridge of hope. Listen, we are talking about the triumph of hope this morning. There abides, the Bible says there abides the three. Faith, hope, and love. And the Bible says the greatest of them is love. Why is love the greatest? Why? Because love is endless. There are some things you can't get out of your system. As I said, love is endless. You know what I remember? Endless love. How many people remember? I'm a company here. I'm not going to fall into that temptation. Amen. Love is endless. Why? Here on earth, we love. We love him because he first loved us. We are loving here on earth. Listen, when we transit to heaven, we will continue to love him because we will see him just as he is and we will continue to love him. So love is endless. Why is love endless? Because God himself is what? Love. So love has no end. Have you seen people, you know, let's not even take the example of parents. You know, parents will discipline their children, but you see, inside their heart of hearts, that action is based on love. And then you will see a man and his wife who are not blood related, but they have a covenant that is stronger than blood. And they'll be doing scos, 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 scos to each other, bass goes here and there. But in their sane and silent moments, they still love each other. You look at her like that. <laughs> and then you will do some basketball for a few days. And then whichever style is your style, if it is ancient and modern, if it is whatever, whatever, maybe you send some, one child to her or, where, or you touch her like this and then you see that she will smile. Some of that was supposed to be fighting with you. And then she will smile. I show you, I show you early. Love is endless. Even when we were yet sinners, the Bible says Christ died for us. For God so loved. Love is endless. But guess what? Faith has an end. Faith has an end. And what is the end of faith? The end of faith is reality. The moment we see what we are believing God for, that is the end of that chapter. Faith has worked and it has exhausted itself and it, it can be disposed of. So the end of faith is reality. But guess what? When hope ends, everything ends. When hope ends, everything ends. Those who commit suicide, they have come to the end of hope. Those who give up, they have come to the end of hope. So the moment hope ends, everything else will end. The moment hope dies, the will to continue also dies. Now hope can be endless if it does not triumph. And I'll make it clear. I said love is endless because love will transcend hair on earth. But you see, hope also can be endless. The reason why hope can be endless is when we are yet to experience the triumph of hope. 
Have you not known of situation where parents will pass down something to their children? Have you not heard of situations where they will say that parents are trying to live their lives even through their children? Maybe your father desired and so wanted to become a medical doctor, but some way, somehow, he couldn't become a medical doctor. So he would tailor the life of the children into it, into them becoming medical doctors, and he would be so proud. Why? Because that was what he wanted to be. So he would be living his life through those children. When David was about to die and was giving instruction to Solomon, what did he do? He told him about this person, told him about that person, told him about this person, told him about that person, and he said, you are a wise child. You know what to do. So he passed it on. I have made up my mind. I have committed myself. It has come from my mouth. that I said, I'm not going to hurt him. I'm not going to kill him. I have given my word, but you did not give your word. You are a wise child. So that hope was transferred. So it means that inside David's heart of heart, he did not totally forget that issue. Are you listening to me? As long as you sustain hope, listen, child of God, victory is sure. For us as believers, head, we win. Tail, we win. As long as hope is sustained, I can assure you that victory is sure. Joseph said, I die. But God will surely visit you. It took 430 years after the first descendant of Isaac stepped onto the Egyptian soil. God had said in Genesis chapter 15, when he was entering into a covenant with Abraham, that he should know assuredly that his descendants were going to be in a strange land for 400 years. But they did not call upon the name of the Lord at the right time, didn't do the right thing, that there was an additional 30 years. Joseph so believed that word of God that he said, I'm dying, I'm going to die. But God will surely visit you. How was he so sure? Because God had said so. And he said, when you are leaving this land, ensure that you carry my bones. That word came to pass. Hundreds of years after Joseph had died. He was so sure that hope was endless until the time of his fulfillment when it triumphed. Can I hear an amen? Daniel believed the prophecy of Jeremiah concerning the captivity of Israel in Egypt. God said that they were going to be in captivity for 70 years. And at the expiration of 70 years, what did Daniel do? He began to pray, to seek the face of God. So that hope was endless until the termination of the 70th year. When it triumphed. Are you getting something this morning? They talk about endless love, but there is actually no endless hope. There is actually no endless hope. Because hope has to end somewhere. It can be endless until the time of its triumph. The moment hope has triumphed, that's the end of it. Praise the Lord. Hope is either fulfilled or it ends. When hope is fulfilled, that's the end of hope. And when hope ends without being fulfilled, that's also the end of hope. In Psalm 69 verse 6, the Bible says, Let not them that wait on thee. Are you waiting on God? Are you waiting on God? The Bible says, let not them that wait on thee, O Lord of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. Are you waiting on God? You will not be put to shame. The Bible actually tells us of a few people who hoped and did not live to see the triumph of what they hoped for. They hoped and they did not see the fulfillment, but they died in hope. So it is possible to die in hope. And the Bible gives us, gave us examples. In Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 32, the Bible says, what shall, we, what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, uh, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith 
subdued kingdom, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, and turned to fight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of prayer, mockings, and scourging. Yea, uh, moreover, of bones and imprisonment, they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sun. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. All this and this all, having obtained a good report, they obtained a good report through faith received not the promise the bible says they received they obtained a good report through faith and yet they did not receive the promise god having provided something better some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect that the triumph of the hope they had will be imperfect until the coming of the Messiah, which we are partaking of. So they hoped, and yet they did not live to see the triumph of that hope. So as long as we keep hope alive, its triumph is inevitable. As long as we keep hope alive, the triumph of hope is inevitable. All you need to do is just to look around you. Look at where you are. Look at where you are now. Look at how God has sustained you and how God has carried you through the storms and the torrents of life. When things were tough and difficult and you could not have imagined how you would make it, God may decide to put you to sleep and then carry you, carry you through the storm. There was um, this poster that I had hung in my room when I was much younger. It's a story of a man who had a relationship with God and himself and God were walking by the beach and he looked back and saw that there were four footprints his footprints and the footprints of God depicting his life and he saw that when things were rosy when things were smooth when they, he had joyous moments he saw four footprints but when things were difficult and tough he saw only two and he said to God, God, you have not been very fair. When things were easy and rosy for me in life, you were there with me. But when things were tough and difficult, you left me. Because I look back, I only saw just two footprints. And God says, son, you are making a mistake. At those times, I didn't abandon you. I didn't abandon you. I carried you. That's the reason why instead of four footprints, you saw only two. The footprints you were seeing were actually mine. In tough times, God is there with us. Not just to accompany us, but to carry us through. He carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He will carry you. He carried them. He will carry us. No matter how tough, no matter how difficult, no matter how dark, no matter how gloomy it may be. There are situations where you have no words. Now you just look at the person and you look at yourself. Both of you will look at yourself and you will heave a sigh and hmm. That's all you could do. God is in the midst of her. God is in the midst of her. The Bible says God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in time of trouble. He has not abandoned us. He has not left us. He has not forsaken us. He is near at every point in time. That is the God that we serve. Hope requires patience. Hope requires patience. There are things we do not understand. There are things that we think we understand, but we do not really appreciate. Don't criticize me until you walk in my shoes. You've not been where I have been. So don't tell me you understand what I'm going through. You might have gone through something similar, but you are not me, I'm not you. We process things differently. So don't criticize me until you walk in my shoes. 
Hope requires patience. It requires patience. So there will be times that you need to give people some distance. Allow them to process things the way they know best to process things. Don't come hard on them and say, Kilo Tia, they know what's wrong with you. Are you the only one? We have done, we have done this, we have done this. You are not him. You are not her. She's not you. He's not you. Leave them. We have a common ancestry. We have the same God. Who is not just God to us, but is our Father. And He knows how best to deal with every one of us. Our daughter, after childbirth, asked me to thank her mother. I wasn't the one that instructed her that you should thank your mother. She was the one that said, Daddy, help me to thank mommy. I thought that was the end of it. I said, ah, Bella when they were coming back, he said, Ha! Ah, God gave me an angel. Because without this woman, I can't imagine how I would have been able to survive this particular leg of the strip. Daddy, help me to thank your wife. Now, this was not Daddy, help me to thank my mother. It was, Daddy, help me to thank your wife. There are some things you will appreciate some more when you go through the ringers. On that same particular trip, they saw somebody else with a similar situation who was traveling alone. I didn't go. I planned everything. And when I was finding, they were, they were scattering ground for me, including this, my wife. They were saying this, they were saying that, they were, but I stood my ground. He said, but, you know, when we get there, after we do everything, after we finish everything, maybe we can come back. I said, this is the date. I, I, I will make room, I will make allowance. If we say it's going to work this way, if it doesn't work that way, me, I will leave room for buffer. I will leave room. Eh? But how about when we do this? When we, I say, when you do that, when you do that, come back. Oh, it's a problem. There's no problem. Come back and come back. By the time they got there, they got the first this, they got the first that. They saw the sense in having a father. Once we get the child's passport, maybe we can come back. I said, come back. Passport came back in, ah, go with heal our land, and he's healing it. Passport came out in three days. Over could travel certificate. Because the child doesn't have a Nigerian passport. And has to travel. They require a Nigerian travel certificate. Over could travel certificate. At the end of the day, this, the thing that we said Baba should not hear, it was Baba that said to it. What I said, the provision that I made, I made room. I, I plan in such a way that if it doesn't, okay, this is what it's supposed to be. Let's leave room on this side. Let's leave room on this side. You, you, you are not God. You can't determine when the child will come back. Number one, the day they said the child will come out was not the day the child came out. The child came out on my father's birthday. Oh, my Lord, my. Many days after, so it has moved the date automatically. And then travel certificate and everything. So at the end of the day, my plan was perfect. That's the same way the God that we are dealing with, who is our father, that's the same way he does things. We may not understand it. We may think, oh, he's too slow. Oh, is this, is that. Ah, when I do this, I should have done this. I should have leave God to handle it. Hope requires patience. He will have made provision for the buffer. Because he is God in heaven, but you are air on earth. You have, con you have issues to contend with, which are earthly. Anything can happen that can scatter things. God remains God. His plan doesn't change. All you need to do is just to be a little more patient. Please let me to say to your neighbor, say, neighbor, be patient. God knows what he's doing. 
Oluwa mo nti o se emi mi mo mo nti o se Jesu mi mo nti o se o taye mi yo he knows what he's doing so be calm be patient you are in safe hands can i say that again be calm be patient you are in safe hands hallelujah Romans chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Look at this. Who against hope believed in hope. Do you know what it means while we are waiting? I don't, I've not seen a human being who enjoys waiting except those whose perspective to life have changed. There's a small video clip of a few people that survived 9-11. They just picked them up randomly, those who survived 9-11. One man survived 9-11 because in their office, they give donuts. You know, members of staff, they have a roster. So if Pastor Bamboche brings donuts today, it will be Pastor Pat that will bring donut next. Then it will be Pastor Ojo that will bring next. It will be Satiti that will bring next. Then it will be Reverend Onosanya that will bring next. This man missed being in the office because it was his turn to bring donuts. So he went to pick the donuts and he was delayed. And he couldn't get to the office. That was how God delivered him. Another one, it was because there was a traffic holdup at a particular intersection. And he was calling frantically. He didn't know that that was what God was using to save him. Another person, the car just refused to start. The car just refused to start. Another person, the child fell. Your child falling. And you are not sure if it's a sprain, if it's a broken bone, will you leave your child and go to work? So instead of going this way, he went this way to take the child to the hospital. Escaping disaster. God knows what he's doing. But he said, but pastor, how about the other people that perish over 3,000? Are there not Christians amongst them? He don't, there were Christians amongst them. I don't have an answer for that. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8 from verse 24. The Bible says, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not, then we will patience wait for it. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 35. I love this. The Bible says, cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and it that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe unto the saving of the soul. I'm saying to you by the word of the Lord, wait on the Lord. Allow God to work it out. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 28, the Bible says, The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. For us to unlock the next level from where we are to get to where we desire, from where we are to get to the level of the new beginnings, from where we are to get to where God had said, from where we are to get to the next level, projected into it, the key to unlocking the next level is actually hope. Hope is the key to unlocking the next level. Because I know they will call me next. We've been waiting in line. And after this person, this person will move to this chair. After this person, this person will move to this chair. No, it won't get to my turn and they will say, no, we are no more doing it. Hope will sustain me. I know it's a matter of time. It will soon be my turn. So the key to unlocking the next level is actually hope. Because you believe, you will not give up. Simply because you believe, you will not give up. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 20, the Bible says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful, that promise. God is no man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. As he said it, will he also not do it? As he proposed it, will he also not make it good? What God said he will do, he will do. 
What God proposed to do, he will do. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. When you refuse to give up, you will see the promise that God had said. In John 11, chapter 4, verse 40, John chapter 11, verse 40, Jesus Christ said to them, he said to her, said now I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see, thee, thou shouldest see the glory of God. I'm saying to you, if you will believe also and wait patiently, you will see also the glory of God. What made Ruth insist on following Naomi? It was ridiculous. Her husband was dead. Her father-in-law was dead. Her brother-in-law was dead. Naomi was old. And Naomi explained to them, look, even if I were to marry today and have a child, will you wait on the child until the child is matured to have a husband? You look at your sister-in-law. I mean, follow her, go back, and release you from the obligation. And she said, whither you go, I will go. Your God shall be your God. Where you die, I will die. What made her to follow? There was hope in the mix. There was hope. She wasn't just following her anyhow. She knew about the covenant and she proposed in her heart that she was going to go. He said, Ruth, Ruth said, Ruth chapter 1 verse 25 said, Turn again, my daughters, and go your way. For I'm too old to have an husband. And if I should say I have hope. Naomi was saying, if I should have an husband also tonight. And should also be her sons. He was saying, look, he was doing, she was doing everything to dissuade them. One followed reason, the other one followed leading. I don't think you got that. One followed reason, the other one followed leading. Sometimes it's okay to follow reason. I do, we all do, logical. But many times when we follow leading, Reason is suspended and superseded because it doesn't make sense. But I'm convinced that faithful is he who has promised who also will do it. That's the reason why I'm following the leading even though it seems illogical. Opa followed reason. Ruth followed leading. And at the end of the day, she became one of the progenitors of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Many times we get this correct because of what we are seeing. It is enough. We are seeing things that are not palatable. We are seeing things that don't sit well. And we become beclouded. We become discouraged. But do not forget who made the promise unto you. Do not forget the one who promised you. Do not forget the one you are dealing with. I mean, Goliath was intimidating enough for David to turn back, but he remembered. When I killed the bear, when I killed the lion, I wasn't mad, I wasn't stupid to have thought that I killed the lion and the bear in my strength and my might. It wasn't because of my skill that I was able to kill the bear and kill the lion. Ah, if it was God, that same God who helped me then, that same God will help me now. What has God done for you before? Why do you think he will not be able to sort you out now? Hallelujah. When the water hits the ground, life will spring forth. And the water is the word of God. At the word of the Lord that you are hearing this morning, life will spring forth. In your situations, in your circumstance, in the name of Jesus. In Job chapter 14 from verse 7, the Bible says, For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will boil and bring forth boughs like a plant. The water is the word of God, nourishing your life, nourishing your situation, nourishing your circumstance, and at the scent of the water, your life will spring forth again in the name of Jesus. I'm saying it will come it will come i'm saying it will come in the name of jesus in psalm 16 verse 9 the bible says therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiced my flesh also shall rest in what in hope hallelujah what god has promised will happen it may not look like it now but it will surely happen hallelujah 
there are different degrees of hope. I want to run now because I need to finish this message. There are different degrees of hope, different degrees of hope. And listen to me, it's important for you to understand the different degrees of hope. Number one, there is tenured hope. When something is tenured, it means that it, have a, it has a shelf life. It has a lifespan, like pregnancy. Can pregnancy, can you be pregnant for 10 years? Huh? And where, from the moment you receive the test result that you are positive for pregnancy, what happens? Hope. We are hoping that by the ninth month, there will be a delivery. So there is a tenured hope. You know, 40, 400 years in Egypt, that was tenured. 70 years in Babylon, that was tenured. You know that before the expression of the, ten, uh, of the tenure, if you try to do something, it will not happen. Why? Because God had said that the captivity was going to be for 70 years. God had said that the captivity was going to be for 400 years. So there is tenured hope. Now all you need to do is to wait it out. So there is nothing you can do about that. It's just to wait it out because it has been tenured. Hallelujah. Like your salary. Abby? Is salary not tenured? Even if they pay you on the 20th of every month, you can have advantage of just one month. Next month, when will your payment come? 20th also. That one month will be complete. It's tenured. So if you're a salary earner, by the time it's just a week or so to your salary, what will happen? Something will be bubbling on the inside. I, I, I will say, at least salary for a day, I will use it to defray. Tenured hope. That's tenured hope. Hallelujah. Like the ripening of the fruit. And there is also non-tenured hope. Hope that is not tenured. There is nothing, don't make the mistake, there is nothing you can do about tenured hope if it is from God. There's no, you can't pray to hasten it. You can't pray to delay it. It can be delayed, but it can be hastened. Like the 400 years that became 430. That was delayed. But it cannot be hastened. It is tenured. You can't get a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. May God forgive my sins. Say amen. May God forgive my sins. Say amen. amen. Don't you want me to make heaven? I'm, I'm praying for myself. You are not saying amen. May God forgive my sins. When I married this lady, very innocent. We got married. He doesn't know Jack. He doesn't know this from that. Young people here, close your ears. Yes. So, after she got pregnant, we were glad, we were happy. Her first pregnancy, we were happy. And then she said she was going to close shop. Ah, ah, that, ah, no, ah, that she's pregnant now. Do I, do I want the pregnancy to come down? And, ah, I said, ah. I didn't think about Mole. I didn't think about just came out by the let me not say by the Holy Spirit. It came out by the Daughter Spirit. I said, ha. Don't tell me. I'm a low you. Till lay cannot tell low. What you Ah, for what she half a cannot see half for you. He said, eh, I say yes. I go, you call on Nari Jimmy. She didn't know Jack. You want to have, give back to a child that doesn't have nails, that doesn't have hand, that doesn't have eyes? That, that just, go sing, go, man, it's, it's the work that we are doing in between. That we, that when we do it, that one we put eye, that one we put nail, that one we put eye. Hey, okay. You know me, you go monk, but you know, that can't work a second time. <laughs> Hallelujah. So may God forgive me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you cannot do anything about tenured hope. What led me to that was the fact that you cannot say a pregnancy will last for nine months. So I, because I want to have a baby in one month, let me get nine ladies pregnant. So this one will carry one month of it, another one, and we join it together and we have one baby. It doesn't work like that. But when hope is a hope that is non-tenured, listen to me, child of God, it can be hastened. It can be hasty. You can fast forward it as well as delaying it. Hallelujah. It is not dated. It is in the future, but the future is not specified. 
Hallelujah. That's why some people can get 30 uh, fold return. Some can get 60 fold return. Some can get a hundred fold return. Hallelujah. We can hasten it. We can also delay. There are tracks in life that you build in anticipation that someday a train will run on those tracks. You are just preparing ground in hope. And that is the reason why many Christians are far ahead of others. Why? Because they have laid the track. But the other people are saying, where is the train? That you are laying the tracks. Where is the train? By the time the train shows up, the one who has laid the tracks has a head start and has an advantage. When we believe God, we take steps along the line of what we believe. Have you seen it? No, not yet, but I will see it. Has it happened? Not yet, but it will happen. Is it here? Not yet, but it will come. As sure as the day will break, it will come. So begin to lay tracks right now. Who against hope? Believe in hope. Hallelujah. I'm saying, child of God, there is hope for you. His word will prevail. His word will not fail. His promise will be fulfilled. His counsel will stand. Bad patches will come, but they do not last. When storms gather, the clouds become dark. But after the rain will come the sun. It will bright again. I'm saying to you by the word of the Lord, the sun will shine again. The sun will shine again. The sun will shine again. That may have been storm and things have been dark and difficult and gloomy and dark and all that. But after the rain, the sun will shine again. The sun will shine again. This too will pass in the name of Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 4 from verse 18, the Bible says, Who against hope believe in hope? We have read that before. Uh, but let me start from verse 19. And be not weak in faith, he concerned not his own body now dead. When he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded, child of God, that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Where are you fully persuaded? Being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he was also able to perform. The fundamental truth is that there will always be challenges in life. Some will be small, some will be big, some will be significant, some will not be as significant. But the truth is that they will not last forever. I'm saying again, there is hope for you. Hope is the foundation for change. People change, things change, situations change simply and basically because there is hope. So I assure you that things will change. But beyond here, child of God, there is eternal hope. Beyond where we are, there is also eternal hope. There is the hope of eternal life. Which is the game changer for us as believers. The Bible says, what shall he profit a man? If you should gain the whole world and lose his soul. We must consider whatever we are doing in the light of eternity. Please touch the keyboard softly. Whatever it is that is happening to us, we must consider it in the light of eternity. Is it a gain for heaven or a loss for heaven? No matter what we gain here on earth, if we lose heaven, we are all men most miserable. And no matter what we lose on earth, no matter how precious, if we gain heaven, then it is worth a while. So there is the hope of eternity, which is the most important hope for us as believers. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery amongst the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is our ultimate hope. No matter what we do here on earth, there is a hereafter. No matter how long we live, we are going to live longer, much longer, even in heaven. In 1 John chapter 3, from verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And the Bible says, And every man that hath this hope in him purified himself, even 
as he is pure. I will ask you, church, even as I'm asking myself, if all were to end today, are you sure of where you will spend eternity? If everything were to end today, will it matter that you have a PhD or you didn't go to school at all? Will it matter that you sit at a golden dining table or you sleep on a mat? Will it matter that you have billions stay saved up in your accounts or you manage to eke out a living? If all were to end today, are you sure of where you will spend your eternity? It is not a difficult question for any serious believer to answer. Our hope is built on nothing else but on Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Our hope is based on nothing else but on the completed work of the cross of Calvary. The triumph of hope is see what we hope for made manifest. The most important manifestation is the manifestation of sons of God when we see him, when he appears and we be like him. Please stand on your feet and talk to God this morning. I want to pray. But I want you to talk to God. What are my most important considerations now? Is it what I will eat or what I will drink? Is it that I will fly first class or fly coach? Are those things that matter to me now, are they important in the light of eternity? Are they important in the light of eternity? The way I'm living my life, if everything were to end now, will I live in perpetual regret? It would be sad for believers not to make heaven. Why? Because you had a chance while on earth. It wouldn't be as difficult for those who did not know even though they had no, they have no, they will have no excuse. But you that know, then it will become unknown. And yet, you didn't do anything about it. Please straighten up your life with God. If there are areas that you need to straighten up, please straighten things up with God. And make up your mind that you will live for Him. That's the whole essence of this, that you will live for Him. What you will get, what you will eat, what you will wear, where you will be, those things are unimportant in the light of eternity. In, in the light of eternity, those things will not matter. What will matter is what did you do with Jesus when you had the chance. Lord, have mercy upon us and help us. Lord, I will consider our lives in the life of eternity. Today we know beyond any shadow of doubt that there is hope for us. We have hope not just here on earth, but we have hope of eternal life. Lord, help us, oh God, even to keep this in view in the name of Jesus. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. I'm going to make this call only once. If you want me to pray for you, you want to give your life to Jesus, you have straightened things up, you have seen the importance of living a life for Christ. Raise up your hand where you are. I want to pray for you. That's the only call I'm going to make. Raise up your hand. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Just raise up your hand where you are. I want to pray for you. I'll take my seat afterwards. I can't see any hand. Please give thanks to God for his words to us this morning. And I appreciate him.